Hello, this is Composition 2 at Cowley Online, and I'm Deborah Layton, your guide for this semester. I'd like to start off by saying welcome and showing you a few things that will help you to navigate here at the beginning of the class. Now, I'd like to keep these videos fairly short, and I may not do one every single week, but I would like to share information with you, give you some background information, maybe make this environment a little bit less sterile, and to show some enthusiasm for the content that I'm going to be teaching you this semester. So in looking at your screens, we will always have an opening announcement at the beginning of the week. We run from Monday morning to Sunday night is how I take our weeks through the semester and it gives you thorough information about what you should do to get started. Now you can see that it says to go to the syllabus link. This is like a student teacher contract and once you open that you find my contact information and a lot of really important information about the class including the fact that we need two different textbooks in our class. So read through that very carefully because you will be needing to be responsible for it. If you go to the Start Here link next, as asked, there's a little bit of information about me again, and it's asking you to read the essential course information. Notice that it gives you a lot of information there about um, there could be assignments inside of there, that kind of thing, so be sure to read. So I want to encourage you all to read your screens carefully every week. Some of us try to skim through things very quickly in an online session, but you might miss something very important. I'd like to also um, just kind of approach something that is maybe a misconception. Some students think that online classes are a lot easier than face-to-face, -face. but again, I think that's just a perspective or perception. We have the same outcomes and the same major assignments as all Composition II classes at Cowley. So you'll be doing the same work. You're just going to be having to be more responsible for it on your own. So it's going to require that you are organized and that you are self-motivated every week to get through the class successfully. So if you want to know more about how to achieve success in class, please read this attachment. Um, it also gives you some other important information about alternative formats. You may want to listen to content rather than read it, that kind of thing. And you'll see then that there is a syllabus and course information quiz due by this Friday. Now once you've done all of that, um, then you can go back to the announcements if you've forgotten what it is that you're supposed to be doing now. Um, or go to course content. This is where I like to say we live in this class. Course content will have the different modules that the syllabus discussed. Now our first module is about seven weeks long and it's all over literary analysis. So we're going to be reading some short stories. Now if you get your textbook, literature and the writing process. All right, you'll see that um, at the very beginning of this book, it really gives you um, a guide for the book, but I think it gives you also what I call really a guide for this class, what this class is really all about. Um, in the introductory pages, part one, composing an overview, it says that the text serves a dual purpose. So I want you to keep in mind that this class serves a dual purpose. I like that it says that that purpose is to enable you to enjoy, understand, and learn from imaginative literature and to help you to write clearly, intelligently, and correctly about what you have learned. That this instruction is designed to guide you through the interrelated processes of analytical reading and critical writing. Now those are two very important things as you move on in your college careers and in your business outside of college as well. So um, if you go into your course content, you see your modules, this will give you some information about the basic setup of the class. And if you click on module one, remember if it's a folder, it means that there are things inside of it, okay? First, you'll see the objectives for the course. Basically, what it is that um, I'm expecting that you get out of this unit, okay? Then you go into your week one page. These, is, these are what I call pages. They're just blue, look like pieces of paper. And so it'll tell you what your tasks are for this first week of class. And I've tried to help you out 
by putting some things in bold so that you can know the important features of this week that you have to make sure that you get done. Now, if you notice, this looks like a whole lot of reading on one page. However, it is the beginning of the class, so I'm trying to be very thorough and explaining everything along the way. As you get to going into the class, you're going to understand more of the layout of the class and not need so much background information, so I'll get right to the point. Okay, but you will have some attachments that you will see below your pages that will tell you what you need to, you know, co coincide with what you need to do for this week. So first there's the day one notes. That gives you some terminology that'll be really important for you to know as you start reading the stories for our module one. And then the critical reading guide is really to help you to think in terms of, if I'm gonna take notes on what I read so that I make the reading process more active and I learn more from it and retain more of it, what can, kinds of things do I need to be taking notes on? So this will give you some ideas that will really help to supplement the information from chapter one. Now, as you start reading the book, you'll notice it starts off with a short story or an excerpt, really, from James Joyce's book um, called Eveline. So I'd like for you to read that really carefully. Go just line by line asking yourself, what is this text giving you? For example, in the first tiny paragraph, we learn so much. She sat at the window watching the evening invade the avenue. Her head was leaned against the window curtains, and in her nostrils was the odor of dusty cretone. She was tired. Now, we get a whole lot of information about this woman, right? And so that starts to build for us a context for the situation. It starts to maybe give us a feel for the time period that we are in and the setting where we are as well. It tells us something about the mood. It seems kind of depressing. And there's some um, alliteration going on in there. And alliteration, as you'll find as you study your terminology, that's the repetition of a consonant sound throughout a line. So when it says window, watching, and then evening, invade, the avenue, all of those repeated W's and V's, that's alliteration. And so it's really um, emphasizing this mood of her kind of maybe yearning or, or longing for the past in a way. Watch for repetition as you read this story too. This is classic literature, so it's a very rich text with a lot of literary devices in there that are making us as readers feel something. Okay, so I want you to think about what is this author getting at? What is he trying to suggest to me or make me learn based upon the way that he is saying this? So as you look at literature this semester, I want you to think not just, you know, what's said, but how it's said. The way that things are written are so very important for our understanding of the text or deeper understanding of the text. Okay, so it's not just how someone says something or what someone says, but those things together that really form meaning for us. Okay, so read through that story really closely, and then you have a discussion forum prompt called the expressive connection. And so I want you to stop as soon as you finish reading that story, and I want you to write that discussion forum post from page eight, number one. Okay, that's to express. I want you to write your personal reaction to this story. And the prompt on that page gives you some ideas. What are your feelings about her? Do you sympathize with her? Do you pity her? Does she irritate you or make you angry? Can you identify with her? Do you understand what she's going through? Because you've been in a similar situation of having to make this major decision of do I leave home or do I stay? What's my responsibility? How responsible am I to my parent? You know, that kind of thing. So I want you to write that response in the discussion forum. Now, discussion forums are open for everyone to see. And so I want you to um, write your post first. This is a post first forum, so you won't be able to see other people's responses until you write your own. And then that may require that you log out and back in in order to see what other people have written. And then I want you to respond to two other people, at least two other people in a meaningful way. 
no posts that are you go girl kinds of things. I want you to really think about what this other person has written. And I want you to maybe agree with them or disagree with them and then explain why. I want meaningful responses to each other because in order to get the most out of this medium, we have to read each other's thoughts. It's like we're sitting in a classroom and we're listening to each other and talking to each other. We're just doing it through this online medium um, this way. So that's how we're going to get the most out of this is if we read each other and we respond meaningful to each other. Okay. Now these due dates are always highlighted in yellow. Our cutoffs are 930. So if you don't log in until 935, you won't see this assignment there anymore. So it's very important that you get in there and you do these things early. You know, uh, help each other out by posting as early as possible so that you can just check back a couple days later and respond to a couple of other people. You know, this isn't due until Sunday night at 930, but if you do your post by, say, Wednesday, then you can go in and do your responses Friday because surely other people will have posted by then, right? And it's all done. You don't have to worry about it. Maybe um, if you read through the syllabus and your essential course information, then everything should be spelled out pretty uh, specifically for you. Um, if you do have any questions about the class, you can um, contact me. There's an email link here from your course menu, or you can call my office. My numbers are posted there. Or if you have a general question to the whole class, not just to me, then of course you can always go into the course tools and discussion board and do this. Do you have any questions about this course link? Now what I do is I actually go in and I subscribe to that so that if anybody puts anything in there, then I get an email telling me that I need to go in and look. All right. So um, course tools also just quickly, I'll tell you that there's a student resource folder here that you can go into and get some um, information about our major assignments or learning guides for success. For example, if you're going, I this is literary devices, I don't know what to do with them, then watch that video. OK, or this one, this follow this link. Um, so peruse through there. Don't don't hesitate to go clicking around and seeing what you can find. Um, again, if you have questions about anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, our videos won't always be this long, don't worry. Uh, I look forward to working with you this semester and have a great week.